Hey guys, Joel back at it once again with some OCR FSMQ lessons and today we are studying binomial distribution or otherwise known as the binomial distribution function. So uh, in the last episode we uh, introduced uh, ourselves to binomials uh, through the form of binomial expansions and we'll be sort of linking to that today but uh, the, the only thing you'll see carry over is the use of the NCR button on the calculator. So learning objective today is to be able to work out probabilities related to the binomial distribution function. So we'll start off saying how many ways can you order A, B, C and D in a four letter code? Well, in the first position you've got A, B, C or D, so you've got four choices. In the second position you'll only have three choices left because one's gone. If you've picked A, you've only got B, C and D left. Similarly, if you've picked B, you'll only have A, C, D left. You get the idea. In the third position, you'll only have two choices left because two of them have gone. Because if you've picked A and B in your first two, you've only got C and D left. And uh, in the fourth position, you only have one choice because three have gone. So you've got four times three times two times one choices, uh, which is 24, four factorial because uh, and in probability means times because you'll have picked A and B and C and D and you had a whatever chance of getting it and you end up with 24 choices overall 24 factorial uh, sorry 4 factorial so in general if you want to arrange n different items in a row there will be n factorial ways of doing it so uh, th there must be n different ways so you know A, B, C, D they're all different. If it was A, 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 then obviously it changes because they're all the same, which we might study here. There you go. How many five-letter words can you make from the letters of Apple? Well, you would just think it was five factorial. Uh, there you go. But they're not all different, so some of the words will actually be duplicates, as we call them. So this means some words will be the same. Therefore, you have to divide out by 2 factorial, so the number of repeats, so it'll end up being 5 factorial over 2 factorial, which, uh, if we break that into raw definition, is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 over 2 times 1, and the 2 times 1's cancel, and you end up with 120 over 2, which equals 60. So, that's just something, you know, to worry about. Uh, not to worry about, it's just something to be aware about, I should say. But, um... Here's an example of what binomial distribution is. So students are taking part in a multi-choice exam. There are 10 questions, each on separate topics. So separate topics means that you kind of have any duplicate answers. Each question has four options. A student who has done no revision tries to guess all of them. What is the probability that they will get them all right? So there we go, we'll set up 10 boxes. Uh, probability of getting one right, if there's four options, is a quarter. So um, there you go, we want them all right, so that would mean 1 over 4 to the 10, surely, yep, 1 over 4 to the 10, uh, which is very, very small, so I didn't even bother working that out. Getting them all wrong is similar, you know, it's th uh, 3 over 4, all to the 10, which is some weird number as well. But what's the probability that they will get 6 correct? Now, you'd instantly just think, well, it's a quarter all the way like that and three quarters like that. Anybody disagree? It would be one to the four to the six times three to the four to the six. But hold on. That's a very specific way of getting six right. There are loads of other combinations of six ticks and four crosses, so this is where binomial comes into it. The number of uh, combinations of this code is actually ten factorial over 6 factorial times 4 factorial because you know you want 6 right and 4 wrong so that's the way it is so this is known as 10c6 and that's where binomial comes into it so that's uh, the number on your calculator you would type in 10 shift divide 6 there you go and that's what that's that that's what would come up 10c6 so there are 10c6 ways of getting 6 right and 4 wrong okay try and Try and get your head around this. Each one has a chance of 1 to the 4 to the 6 times 3 to the 4 to the 4, 3 over 4 to the 4 of happening. So the P of 6 correct is 10C6 times 
1 over 4 to the 6 times 3 over 4 to the 4. And we'll talk about that in a second because that's the formula. And that equals about 1.6%. So if you go into a multi-choice exam, um, we've got four choices, uh, done no revision, and you just want to guess them all, you have a 1.6% chance of getting six correct, which is, you know, fairly small, so don't do it. So this is the binomial distribution function. Binomial probability is a very famous discrete model. Uh, you will study this at Statistics 2 at A-level if you do that module, and you'll also learn about another uh, famous distribution function known as the Poisson, uh, which is very similar to binomial, but different. <laughs> So binomial will give you the chances of getting outcomes from scenarios where. Now these this could be a one marker in an exam asking you why is it a binomial. So have a fixed number of trials, so n. So I throw a dice six times. It's a fixed number of times I'm going to throw it. That does not change. In each of those trials, you will get one of two outcomes, i.e. success or failure. That's the way I like to think of it. Um, so if I'm throwing darts at a dartboard, uh, wanting to get a bullseye, I can either get the bullseye or I don't get the bullseye. So it's success or failure. Uh, the probability of success is constant, so P, that's what we call it, P. Uh, it's constant, so it doesn't change. And each trial is independent of the next, i.e. the outcome of one does not affect the next outcome. So if I hit a bullseye, it won't affect uh, me hitting another bullseye. But it will, but theoretically we think of it as not happening. So this is the formula. Now, I haven't animated this very well, but uh, if this is the case, your scenario can be modelled by the uh, distribution of x, where x can be di binomially distributed n, p. The way I remember this is b and p, as in the party. Uh, I definitely do not support them, but there you go. Uh, bin n, p, where x is, you know, anything. So the p of x equal an r, if x can be binomially distributed as n comma p equals ncr so that comes from the, the last lesson so power um, and position but r is the number you want so for instance if I wanted six successes that r would be a six so and then it's times your success to the r which is success to the six times uh, failure so one minus the probability or q some people might call it one minus p to the rest, so n minus r. So if I had 10 trials, I wanted 6 successes, 4 would be me rest, and uh, if I had a probability of a success of 0 0.6, my, success, uh, my probability of a failure would be 0 0.4. So the way I've tried to dumb this down a little bit is by saying trials, see how many successes I want, multiplied by the success to how many I want, multiplied by the failure to the rest. But we'll do this in uh, practice now. So this is a classic binomial distribution question. They're usually a lot easier than this actually but they can ask you some stinkers and we'll be going through that in the next lesson when we're talking about at least. Uh, but this lesson is purely exact. So a man fires 10 shots at a target. With each shot he has a 70% chance of hitting the bullseye. All shots are independent of each other, so the examiner has told you that. What's the probability that he hits exactly seven bullseyes? So is it binomial? Well, yes. Uh, what is a trial here? Well, the trial is um, firing a shot, because he's firing shots at a target. What's a success hitting a bullseye? What's the probability of that success? Well, 70%, 0.7. Try and work in decimals rather than percentages, because it, it or fractions. Try and work in fractions or decimals. Are the trials independent? Yes, technically no, but we're told it is, so we have to go with that, and uh, we can't be going changing the, the the probability halfway through. So we say let x equal the number of bullseyes in ten shots. So this is the script. X can be binomially distributed 10 comma 0.7 because that's a constant probability of success, and that's the number. Uh, of a trial, so 10, 0.7, uh, so there you go. And then the P of X equal in 7 will be NCR, which is 10C7, times probability of a success to the 7, because that's the number I want, times failure to the rest, 
because as 10 minus 7 is 3. And that equals about 26.68% or 0.2668, which is, you know, fairly realistic. Uh, so that's that one done. That's all that the, there is to binomial distribution, but we'll do another one just to try and cement the knowledge. So 40% of chocolates in a very large box are soft centered. The rest are hard. If you take five chocolates, what's the probability that you will get three or four soft centers? Is it binomial? Yes. What is a trial? So a trial here is getting a soft center or picking a chocolate. What's a success? This is yes. Yeah, so I was thinking ahead there. The success is getting a soft center. Probability of that success is 40%, so 0.4. Are the trials independent? Yes, technically no, but it's a very large box. So if you the the term very large means that if you pick a chocolate out, it's not going to affect the probability of getting a, a chocolate of another size. It technically does, but we're thinking of a very large box here. So let x equal the number of soft centers in a handful of five sweets. X can be binomially distributed as 5, 0.4 because we're taking five chocolates and the probability of a success is 0.4. So P of X equal in 3 is NCR, which is 5C3 times 0.4 success to the 3 times 0.6 to the 2, which is, well, never mind. But we're also asked to work out what 4 is, so we say P of X equal in 4 equals 5C4 times 0.4 to the 4 times 0.6 to the 1. Or in statistics means add. So we add the two probabilities together and we end up with 0 0.2304 plus 0 0.0768 and you end up with 0 0.3072, which is about 30%, which seems legitimate. And that is that. So hopefully you guys have found this useful uh, in terms of your revision. Hopefully it's helped you. Uh, but it, it does pop up in statistics too on the edXL A-level course, um, so, you know, it, it does prepare you for that, but most, well, I, I, I don't really know how schools do theirs, but in my school, it was only the further mathematicians that actually did binomial distribution uh, of statistics too, so, um, you know, you might not come across this again, but you do need a note for the OCR FSMQ, and, yeah, this is the way I would do it, there are other ways to do it, but this is in my opinion the easiest way you've just got one formula to learn once you've learned that you're away but in the next lesson we'll be talking about a different thing to do with binomial distribution which is a little bit harder to, to grasp a concept of but yeah i'll see you in a couple of days time for that please leave a like down below if you've found it helpful uh, comment any questions or criticisms or anything there will be a worksheet down below in the description if you want it so yeah i'll see you guys in a couple of days time for the next episode. See you later.